Hey guys, today it's uh, on this book we're going to be going over uh, about six questions in part one of the installment of the New York uh, Regents High School exam, getting ready for the um, integrated algebra test. Uh, I want to start by uh, commending you for spending the time to go over these questions. It shows that you care about your education and I wish you the very best in, in the upcoming test. Okay? Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I just want to side, make a side note, which is that um, this document I'm going over can be found on the nysedregents.com website. You can print it out. They have a lot of uh, resources there that you can take advantage of to make sure you get the grade you deserve on this exam. Alright, uh, number one. Let's get started. Um, the question says, the system of equation is graphed on the set of axes below. The solution of the system is, so you have to be really careful here uh, when you're reading the coordinates, some people uh, might switch the coordinates around, so first of all the solution to this system is the point of intersection of the two lines, okay, these two lines represent um, two equations and when they intersect is, it, is where they're exactly equal, so that goes intersection, so what are the x and y coordinates, this is your x axis, so this is your x coordinate right here, this is your y-axis, so there goes your y-coordinate, okay? So let's go ahead and read it. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Your x-coordinate is 4. And your y-coordinate is 1, 2. So if you want to write this as a point, you're going to have, you're going to write it as 4, 2. All right, so your answer to this is uh, 3, all right? Some people might not pay attention to, to this, and they might switch it around and get 2, 4 as an answer which is wrong. Or some people might think, oh, what it's asking for the intercepts. So this intercept, for example, is uh, 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the intercept. That's not what it's asking for. It's asking for intercept. So this would be a wrong option. Or if you wanted to do the x-intercept, which is right here, that's not what it's asking for, OK? It's asking for the solution. Uh, remember, the solution is where they intersect, okay? And you have to make sure you have your x first and your y second so that you don't, you don't get the points wrong, all right? So the answer to number one is option three. All right, moving along. Uh, it says, this question two says, the cell phone ha can receive 120 messages per minute. At this rate, how many messages can the phone receive in uh, 150 seconds? So, so we have the same rate, we can set up a ratio or proportion here, and we can solve it by cross multiplying, all right? So to do this, I'm going to break it down into messages. Into messages and, uh, and, um, and time, okay? Messages and time. All right, so first, when well, we know 120 messages per minute, so 120 messages per in one minute, uh, and then the second ratio is how many messages, how many, that's what we're looking for, we don't know, right? So x is what is the messages that we're looking for, per how many minutes? 150 seconds, okay? All right, so we have two uh, proportions we can set up here, but before we set it up, we have to make sure we are consistent with our units of measurement. This is minutes and this is seconds. We have to pick one or the other. So it looks like it's easier to convert uh, one minute into seconds. If I, if I converted this into uh, minutes, it's going to be a fractional expression, which is a little bit more difficult to solve. So how about we change one minute into 60 seconds, okay? So if I use uh, seconds here, I have consistent units with my time, so I can make the seconds. So um, I can solve this ratio correctly, okay? So one minute is converted to seconds, so it's easier to solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to create a, a proportion, okay? So I'm going to leave it up like this, like that, and then like this. All right, so check out my proportion. I'm going to do the 120 row first. I'm going to write it like this. 120 per 60 equals x, which is the future time we're looking for, per 150. Notice the messages are on top, the numerators, and the time are, times are on the bottom as a numerator, okay? So if you set up a proportion like this, make sure the units are consistent. 
when you solve it, um, it's work nicely, okay? So let's look at this fraction on the left side. These are both multiples of 10, so I can divide by 10 top and bottom. That uh, the same thing as canceling the zeros out, dividing by 10. And I can divide this by 6, the top and the bottom by 6. So that gives me uh, 2 over 1 equals x over 150. Alright, so how do you solve all proportions of this nature? You cross multiply, right? Cross multiply means the denominator goes to the top across and the denominator goes to the top across. If you cross multiply, you have 2 times 150 equals 1 times x. If you multiply them together, you have uh, 300 equals x. Using the reflective property of equality, that's the same thing as x equals 300, and this is the number of messages. Okay, 300 messages per 150 seconds, okay? So this answer is um, option number option number three. All right, so, so there you have it. All right, moving along, uh, let's take a look at question number three. So the value of y in this equation is, so you have 0 0.06y plus 200 equals 0 0.03y plus 350. This is a problem involving solving equations with variables on both sides. So um, what makes this problem look complicated is all this decimal. So how can we clear it? You notice that the highest amount of decimal we have on both sides are two decimal places. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by a number that eliminates the decimal, then our problem will look much ni nicer, okay? So since I desire to move the decimal place back two units, uh, I need to multiply by 100, okay? So a zero, each zero corresponds to a movement in the decimal. If you multiply by 10, it moves the decimal place back one place. If you multiply by 100, it goes, moves it back, uh, moves it back two places, okay? So that's uh, what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 100. Uh, and that will move the decimal place to the right um, two places, okay? So in order to preserve equality, be sure that whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Okay, so times by 100, the left side, and then times the right side by 100. Okay, so all this does is move the decimal place back twice. So 100 times 0 0.06y is going to be 6y because this 100 moves the decimal point back twice. Plus 200 times 100, just combine the zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 20,000. On the right side, wait a minute, on the left side, what I just did, just so I don't lose anyone, is I distribute it to this, and then I distribute it to that, okay? On the right side, same process, I'm going to distribute uh, this 100 to both terms, alright? So when I distribute 100 to 0.03y, it moves the decimal point back two places. 1, 2, so it's going to become 3y, and then when you multiply 100 by 350, you're going to have uh, 3, 5, and just combine this two zeros here, 0, 0, which is 35,000, all right? Now notice that this equation looks much nicer, it's more uh, appealing to the eyes to solve as opposed to this one with all the decimals going on. All right, so to solve this, all I need to do is collect all the y's to one side, and all the x's to the other side. To accomplish that, we're going to use opposites. There's a positive 3 here. I like to move, to move it over here. Subtract 3y from both sides. Okay. And then I want to move this 20,000 to the left side. And to accomplish that, I can simply subtract 20,000 from both sides. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing two steps simultaneously. If it's too much for you, you can do it one step at a time. You're going to get exactly the same answer, but I'm just trying to be quick here so that uh, we can get our answers efficiently, right? So on the left side, if you combine these two, you have 3y. These are opposites by construction, so they add up to 0, they're gone. On the right side, these are opposites, so they add up to 0, so they're gone. And 35,000 minus 20,000 is 15,000. Divide both sides by 3. And your final answer y equals 5,000. That's your answer, and that is option number 3. Okay? Alright, let's move on to question number 4. It says the scatter plot shown below represents the relationship between x and y. The type of relationship is 
Now, positive correlation, negative correlation is talking about the slope of the trend line, okay? Remember, a positive line, a positive slope goes upwards, okay? This is positive and a negative slope is, goes downwards, okay? So, positive correlation, if you look at the trend, if it exhibits that, the pattern of a, this is positive slope, of a positive slope, then the correlation is positive. Well, the negative slope, then the correlation is negative. If you look at this trend line, if I draw a big vertical line around it, what does it look like is happening? Is there a trend going on there? Absolutely, the trend is going upwards, right? You have an upward trend. Since it's going upward, what do you think the slope of this trend is going to be? Since it's going upwards, the slope is positive. Get that out of there. Um, the slope is positive. Um, that means that uh, the correlation is positive, okay? So positive slope means you have a positive, positive uh, correlation. Positive correlation because you have a positive slope. How do you think that if the slope of the line were negative, then that would be in a negative correlation? Now, zero correlation basically means that the points are all over the place and you cannot really use a trend line to describe the pattern of the points as you increase in your x value, okay? So the answer to number four is option one. All right, let's move on to number five. It says the sum of three x squared plus five x minus six and negative x squared plus three x plus nine is, in problems like this, you have to be really careful about organizing your powers and also the rules of combining terms. You combine um, just coefficients, do not add the powers here. So you have to be really careful about that. So I'm going to write down the two of them, 3x squared plus 5x minus 6. And when I'm writing this, I have to make sure the lines are perfect, okay? So the square goes under the square, negative x squared plus 3x plus 9. And then we're going to add them downwards, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and do it. Remember, all we're adding is coefficients, not powers, okay? So powers, addition of powers happens when you're multiplying. But here we're just uh, adding, so all we do is add coefficients. Negative 6 plus 9. Signs are different, so you subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. 9 minus 6 is 3. The bigger is positive, so it's positive 3. Here, signs are the same. Add and keep the sign plus. 8x. Please don't make this a square. That's really wrong, all right? Because when you're adding, you just add coefficients in the power. So if you make this a square, you get the wrong answer. On the last, on the squares, there's no number in front of x squared, so I can always put a 1. That's a multiplicative identity. Signs are different. You subtract and keep the sign of the, big, of the bigger one. The bigger is positive, so if I subtract, I get 2, and keep the sign of the bigger, which is positive, so it's going to become 2x squared. Okay? not to absolute four. Power stay the same when you add in and subtract it, okay? So there goes your final answer. And your answer to this, this is going to be for number five. It's option number two. If you added the powers, you get this one, which is a wrong option right there, okay? All right, now um, let's move on to the next one. Last but not the least, number six. It says, Jason's part-time job pays him $155 a week. If he was, if he has already saved $375, uh, what is the minimum number of weeks he needs to work in order to have enough money to buy a dirt bike for $900? That's expensive. Anyway, so let's do it. So, pay per week. So, it's pay per week is what? $155, right? So, let's say he worked W weeks. Pay after an arbitrary W weeks. W weeks is going to be what? It's a multiplicative, multiplicative relationship, right? So every week, a multiple of 145 tells you how much he's going to make. So after, after W weeks, it's going to be 155 times W, okay? So if he works one week, he earns 155 times one, two weeks. 155 times 2, 3 weeks, 155 times 3. So you just basically multiply the number of weeks times the pay per week. That's how you get, get that, all right? Okay, so starting pay, he didn't start from $0. He had a starting amount. So starting pay uh, is uh, $375. 
Okay, and then the target amount, the target pay, target pay is uh, $900, okay? So if it grows at $155 per week starting with this $375, when is it going to hit $900? That's the question, all right? So to create an equation, all we just have to do is ask ourselves how can we combine these two to hit this target right here. So the question is, um, when is 155? Wait a minute. Yeah, when is 155 uh, W? This is after W weeks plus the starting period of 375. When is it going to hit 900? After how many weeks will this left side be equal to the target of 900? All right. So to do this, we just solve this using the properties of algebra. So um, let's get W by itself. To do that, first thing we do is subtract. 375 from both sides, subtract 375, subtract 375, and then you have 155W equals 525, and then to finish this up, we'll divide both sides by 155, 155, and they have W equals, well, let's uh, finish this up in a calculator, um, right out. 1525 divided by 155 is 3.38, so W equals 3.38. So you have to work m more than three weeks in order to get $900, okay? So let's go back to our question. Which option works here? Is it a three or four? If I work for three weeks, I won't have enough money, right? So I want to make sure I have enough money, so at least the minimum number of weeks to make sure I have enough, the goal here is to have enough, is four weeks, okay? Have you had an option here that says, oh, 3.3, blah, okay? And that will be our answer, but we don't have that option here, so we have to be, we have to think about it. Uh, three weeks is not enough, so we have to work four weeks. We're going to have more than enough money, which is good, though. So out of all these options, this is the only option that guarantees that I have the minimum number of weeks to earn 900. These two work, but they're too much, too much. But this is the best one right here. So the answer um, is option number four, okay? All right. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get the future parts to this, uh, to this um, clip. Um, you can also share this the content with this video with your friends via Facebook or Twitter or even Google Plus. Uh, more videos can be found on myfieldserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.